this is a vertical composite boiler and we are going to perform burner routines and for doing burner routines we have to turn the burner switch to stop mode so now the burner mode is in stop position so next thing that we need to do after uh, putting the switch to stop mode is isolating the fuel oil supply to both pilot burner and main burner once the burner is in stop mode automatically the circulating pump which you call it as fuel oil pump for the burner is already stopped so you can uh, cross check with the pressure gauge you can see the pressure gauge is uh, showing zero and uh, the next thing that we need to do is we have to isolate the fuel supply for both uh, pilot burner and main burner so you have to close the valve which is next to the burner and which is near the pump both inlet outlet valve for the fuel oil pump and the burner fuel oil pump should be isolated this is the area where uh, fuel oil pump and burner pump is located and uh, our crew is closing the fuel oil lines for uh, both the pumps both inlet outlet valve should be isolated so that is what uh, we are carrying out now so as i always say whenever you are doing the closing of valves do not uh, use the f key to tighten it always uh, try to do with the hand tightening if you do with a f spanner there are chances for uh, valve getting damaged over a period of time so next step is for uh, remo remove the ignition electrode power connection those two plug that we had already removed so next we remove the flame eye just it's uh, screwed just remove it unscrew the connection and remove it in this osaka bar boilers you can see the fuel oil system fuel oil line is connected to the burner with the help of quick coupler there is no need of using spanners just you can push the coupler and the line is already out it's a flexible hose and you can see our third engineer is just uh, taking it out there will be four connections two connection for burner and uh, two connection for the pilot burner so that is what we are removing so always try to keep a tray below the fuel oil line so that if there is any dripping it will fall over the tray it don't uh, contaminate the area so you can see all the fuel oil connection is removed ignition electrode electrical connection is removed and flame eye is removed the next thing that we need to do is we have to open the burner securing nuts so always as i say use proper tools to open any kind of bolts and nuts that is what we are doing we are using a long extension socket so that easy to open it so once all the four nuts are opened then we can take out the burner unit outside so we are removing all the four nuts so all the nuts has been removed now we are taking out the burner chamber this is a jet type uh, burner a little bit longer one you can see it's let longer and horizontally mounted and uh, 
you can see the swirler plate it is full of uh, carbon deposit and uh, this is the reason why we are opening the burner just to clean everything it's a ignition electrode there is a pilot burner and a main jet spray pipe so have a look uh, inside the burner uh, surface you can see no nothing abnormal so it's still okay have a look over the blower fan which is down it is rotating that means there is uh, nothing jammed with the roller fan it is fine so next we are opening the pilot burner first open the atomizer it's uh, just open it use proper uh, tools as I always say you this is the pilot atomizer which is uh, already having a very fine filter attached with it so this filter can be removed by unscrewing it is also a screw type only so first thing that we need to do is we have to open the pilot burner and then remove the filter I'm going to remove the filter now yeah just unscrew it the filter is out you have to be very careful with the washer which is uh, there that's the filter and you can see the filter is uh, basically clean no need to but uh, we will be doing a air blow for it just clean it with kerosene and uh, okay next is uh, you can see the nozzle inside the pilot burner will be having a nozzle and filter now we are going to open the nozzle to check the fuel pathway is clear or not so just unscrew it same like how we removed the filter unscrew the nozzle you can take it out be very careful when you are handling this kind of uh, small things because if it fall down it is very hard to find out where it goes because uh, sometimes all the engine blows are running so it, it is it is very thin very weightless it, it will flow out means it will go away somewhere you can see the four uh, passageway and that passageway should be clean you can see i will go for a close-up view you can see the four cut and those four cut should be clear of any obstructions and that uh, mating surface should be clean check for the threads everything is fine so I'm blowing air so when you blow air ensure uh, you are holding it uh, properly if not it may fly away so these uh, equipments are very very small weightless and it may fly away this is the pilot uh, atomizer okay now we are going to fit it back this is a pilot atomizer and uh, nozzle we are screwing it and keep it in the vise and tighten it with the help of screwdriver so initially hand tightening and then tighten with the help of screwdriver so, okay so we are uh, done with uh, inspection of nozzle and inspection of pilot atomizer so these two are done just give you a little more tighten after fixing it in the vise okay this is enough so next thing is uh, we need to fix the filter just blow some air in the filter again uh, this is very small you can see uh, we are blowing air hold the filter properly if not it will fly away and most of the ship we don't have a spare part for this filter so be very careful when handling this kind of items so now uh, next thing is we are going to fix the filter in place that means we are just screwing it inside so very simple just screw it like a bottle only hand tightening is enough no need of using any hot tightening okay next we'll go for the cleaning of ignition electrode 
use a fine MRE. If the carbon deposit is very hard, then you can use a coarse MRE to clean the electrode. The idea is the electrode should be free of any kind of uh, carbon deposit over it. So we are uh, cleaning it, clean all the way so that uh, electrode tip and the electrode is free of carbons. So as I said uh, it has to be cleaned very very easily because this electrodes are very uh, probable to bend. So you have to be a little bit careful when you are handling this electrode. Okay, once the electrode is cleaned, then next thing we need to do is we have to take the clearance. This is the clearance you can found you can find it in the manual. So as per the manual, you have to check the gap between two electrodes. So that is what we are going to do now. So use a vernier caliper for uh, measuring this gap and uh, use inside caliper and take a measurement you can see you have to measure like this the gap should be measured and the measured value should be compared with the makers recommended value if the measurement is not uh, as per makers recommended uh, value then you have to either adjust the gap between the electrode or else you have to do other renewal of electrode or whichever meets the makers recommended value so again uh, i'm showing you how to take the gap measurement between the two L ignition electrodes so this is how you have to take the gap clearance measure the gap clearance between the two ignition electrodes so okay we are done with this so this is very very important when you are taking the measurement so next uh, we have fitted the atomizer in place atomizer is also there and next we have to clear measure the clearance between the atomizer and the electrode so the distance should be measured between the center of the atomizer and the tip of the electrode so this should be taken so this measurement should be taken and compared with the makers recommended value you can see here Okay, so once this is done, fine we are done with this, the next thing that we need to do is, we go for uh, main burner boxing up, again the main burner clean it with the WD-40, this is the nozzle for the main burner, you can see this burner nozzle is occupied with uh, fuel oil impurities so that is the reason we are cleaning it you can see here uh, when compare comparing with the pilot burner pilot burner nozzle is very clean but uh, this main burner nozzle you can see it is uh, it is having a lot of carbon deposit and here also you have to check the pathway the reason why this main burner is having lot of carbon deposit is uh, this main burner is working most of the time with heavy fuel oil and see so you can see the passageway this passageway should be clean so this gives the atomization effect when the fuel comes out so that should be clean and the surface of the nozzle should be clean when we turn the other side you can see the carbon deposit huh? so that is also should be cleaned so that is what we are going to do now for cleaning this take a fine rod thin rod anything and you can 
scrap it out so once the cleaning is done then you can fit it back so okay this carbon deposit or uh, fuel oil uh, deposit hardened fuel oil you can see it has to be removed just you can use make use of any sharp objects like uh, welding rod tip or you can even use uh, uh, thin uh, screwdriver to remove all those uh, fuel oil deposits you can see the changes between uh, the area which is having the fuel oil now you can see it is cleaner just spray some uh, WD-40 and remove all those and now okay we are uh, done with this it is perfectly okay so once this is done blow air so that uh, any fine deposit fine particles will be removed you can see uh, it is cleaned now okay so next thing is we fit back this is the pipe and you can see hard deposits of uh, fuel oil uh, near the threads so that you can, this pipe is called a sprayer pipe huh? this, this pipe is called a sprayer pipe okay so now we have to remove those uh, thick sludge which is on the tip again use any welding rods you can see the fuel oil deposit is coming out so these are all the things which uh, we have to keep it in mind when you are doing burner routines you are, when you do burner routines it has to be done properly it is not just only take it out uh, clean it and put back whenever you do a job do it uh, perfectly so that uh, you don't need to open the burner again you don't need to do the same job second time it will avoid uh, time consuming the second so we are cleaning now so this uh, video is little bit longer video because the reason is I want to show everything little bit uh, uh, elaborate so that when you see this video and when you are going to do this maintenance job you will be confident enough and know each and everything when you do the job so next thing is we have to fit it and before fitting just blow air so that any fine particles whichever uh, we clean will fly out so okay now next thing is uh, we have to thread it so as I always say for threading you have to use a copper slip little ok done next we need to fit the burner in uh, means uh, main burner nozzle in place you can see the burner inside the nozzle is there it has to be properly faced it should not be put in the wrong way you put in the wrong way you don't get the fuel out so place it properly fix it properly before you fit it so now you can see the spray pattern the nozzle area is visible now you can fit it ensure it is fixed seated properly and now you can fit the burner in place so tighten it again uh, tighten it properly use proper tool because most of the time uh, in this burner aspect when we don't use proper tool again this uh, slot will get uh, damaged and uh, the next crew who may be working after 2-3 years will end up into trouble or else you have to change the nozzle that is the only thing so ok so hand tightening first and then use you can use a socket for uh, tightening it ok so we are going to tighten it hold. ask someone to hold just tighten no need of tightening too much just hand tightening is perfect 
So next thing we are done with the burner. Our next thing is the swirler plate cleaning. So you, when we remove only you can uh, see the swirler plate is so much uh, deposited with the carbons. So what we need to do is we have to basically uh, put in a diesel oil and clean it. And this uh, swirler plate have a different uh, special coat so that uh, try to avoid using any coarse hard coarse uh, emery paper so that uh, you can avoid the coat getting damaged so we are doing the cleaning now so once the cleaning is done the next thing is we have to fit the swirler plate so you can see the plate was cleaned completely and blow air on all the uh, passageway all the corners and uh, you can use a thin blade to remove any deposit in way and next thing is we have to fit it how to fit there is a double pin on the body sprayer and you have to fix the double plate directly it has to be like this that's all so after uh, fitting the double plate when double pin is fixed then the swirler plate can be tightened there will be three to four bolts depends on the size of the burner in this case we have uh, three bolts so tighten all the three equally equal tightening should be done so that uh, there won't be any imbalance of uh, imbalance in the sense it don't get uh, bend like uh, if you tight one side too much one side less then again it will be not uh, so narrow so okay so these are the things that you need to keep it in mind uh, while you are doing the burner uh, routines for a boiler so first you check the pilot go wise like uh, first go for a pilot burner nozzle electrode and go for main burner and then go for the swirl pad so that you don't miss anything so whichever uh, you do you have to do it uh, properly no need to think like last time i opened so this time it will be okay not a problem you don't need to give any way to doubts doubt should be straight away cleared on the first time of doing maintenance work only because after you feedback then if something goes wrong if your chief engineer asks have you checked that then you have to tell no i didn't check that so in order to eradicate all those things you have to do the job correctly in the first time only so that you can uh, avoid uh, unnecessary hiccups after uh, you are encountering any kind of problems so now we are tightening all the three bolts so almost we are done with the job so after uh, doing this then we have to inspect the area of the burner chamber just clean it with rags so that is what we are doing now just clean it with uh, rags once we are done with that then we are ready to fix the burner in place okay so next okay so again just uh, anti seize compound on the threads then now you just fix the burner in place in this uh, case you can uh, straight away fix because uh, it is horizontally fitted so slowly you should not hit anywhere it should not damage the electrodes or burner and uh, yes we are done that's all it is in place 
Now next thing is you have to tighten the body of the burner and uh, tighten it properly and then you can uh, fix the fuel oil lines ignition electrode power and uh, that's all diagonally tight the burner uh, chamber okay so we are done with tightening after tightening next thing that we need to do is we have to fix a fuel oil lines just a quick coupler very simple just push and uh, turn it lock it do the same way for all the others pull and push that's all it's very very simple all the four pipes had been uh, in place okay so pipes are in place next thing is uh, fix the ignition electrodes okay we are going for the flame eye next is your ignition electrode power cable okay so we are done with this so after uh, fitting these connections then the next thing is you have to try out the burner so for that you have to open the fuel oil valves so fuel oil valves you can open from both the end so once the burner uh, fuel oil is opened then you can uh, try out the boiler burner it should fire fire for two three minutes then everything is okay then we are done with the job so i believe uh, this video must have given you some information about how to do boiler burner maintenance on board ship what are all the procedure that need to follow what are all the things that need to check and how to do all those things you must be able to understand now we are going to try out the boiler and uh, always uh, take these videos as a reference and please follow the makers instruction because most of the time makers will give some new service letter so follow the instruction take this video as a reference for your knowledge so we are going to try out the boiler burner okay you can see I'm going to try out when you try out you can see a flame in the glass side glass once the uh, flame is there you check the quality of flame everything is okay we are done with the job i believe this video is useful if you have any comment please put in comment box any doubt put in comment box definitely i will reply you you can see the flame that means our job is okay fine thanks for watching thank you all keep supporting